miles or so. And uh, I may, may be in error on the mileage, but in any event, uh, it bottomed. Uh, and the allegation is that the chart was in error and that, that uh, according to the chart, it, it was uh, substantially above the bottom. Uh, the uh, certain damage occurred to its steering apparatus and some of its diving planes, but it was on the surface about a half an hour ago, and uh, no one was injured. There was no leakage, so far as we know, to its nuclear plant. A uh, salvage ship was standing by and uh, to assist it moving into port, and we anticipate no problems. But for a time, it looked like we might have another nuclear incident on our hands. The result is, Mr. President, I'm really not up to date on Southeast Asia. I can't tell you anything. What is the story behind uh, the... Uh, well, what, what was your evaluation yesterday? I want to ask you to go in the office now. I looked at you, and you thought, I thought you were so damn tired. You better go home to your no, wife. No, we had no, to no. Well, well, it started that breakfast, but I just didn't... No, I'm sorry. I would love to come in. Well, I... I, uh, I think it shows two things, Mr. President. Uh, first, that they have more power than some credit them with. I don't think it's a... It's a last gasp uh, action. I do think that uh, it represents a, a maximum effort in the sense of they've poured on all of their assets. And, and my guess is that we will inflict uh, very heavy losses on them, both in terms of personnel and materiel, and this will, will set them back some, but that after they absorb the losses, they will remain a substantial force. I don't uh, anticipate that, that uh, we'll hit them so hard that they'll be knocked out for for an extended period or forced to to drop way back in level of effort against us. I do think that uh, it is such a well-coordinated, such an obviously uh, uh, advanced planned operation that it probably relates to, to negotiations in some way. I would expect that were they successful here, they'd then move forward uh, more forcefully on the negotiation front and that thinking that they have a stronger position from which to bargain. I don't believe they're going to be successful. I think that uh, in Quezon, where we're going to have the real military engagement, I believe we'll, we'll deal them a, a heavy defeat. I think in the other areas, it's, it's largely a propaganda effort and a publicity effort, and I think they'll gain that way. I mentioned our people across the country this morning will we'll feel that, uh, that uh, they're much stronger than they had previously anticipated they were. And in that sense, I think they gain. Uh, the question in my mind is how to respond to this. Is there anything we should be doing we're not doing? Uh, I've talked to the chiefs about some kind of a reciprocal action, uh, uh, retaliation for their attack on our embassy or in retaliation for their attack across the country. There just isn't anything they've come up with that is worth a damn. They talk about a, an area bombing uh, attack uh, over Hanoi. The weather is terrible. You can't get in there with, with uh, pinpoint targeting. The only way you could bomb it at all at the present time is area bombing. I wouldn't recommend that to you under any circumstances. They just haven't been able to think of retaliation that means anything. My own feeling is that we ought to, to uh, depend upon our ability to inflict very heavy casualties on them as our proper response and as, as the message we give to our people. I think that one thing we ought to do is try to keep Westmoreland in the news yes, out there I, ever twice a day. I quite agree. You do, and I think you I have to, I have yeah. Phil to, to talk yesterday to our people there and have, have Westy make, I said once a day, but I'll make it twice a day, you're quite right. I think you ought to, too. I don't think they get enough information. I think you've become sensitive, and we all pulled in, and uh, I meet with them once every two, three months. Yeah. You meet with them once a month if it's something big, but if you'll remember, you used to see them every, almost oh, daily. Oh, yeah, thank you. And I think it shows the difference, and I think in this campaign year, the other crowd has got two or three committees grinding out things. Their only interest is to find something wrong. Yeah. People look for something wrong unless you've got so much choking them that sure. Uh, sure. is happening. Just we back to that Jerry Ford last night. Uh, I want your evaluation of that. I thought it was a disgrace. I really thought it was a goddamn disgrace. That's why I stepped in at one point. I didn't know whether to open up earlier or not. I didn't want to reduce your uh, reaction to him because I thought it was very effective. But... Uh, Damn, when I was annoyed at that. I thought it was discourteous uh, and uh, absolutely irresponsible. 
it seemed to me that he was so determined to find something yeah. wrong, and he had nothing that he could find wrong, although there might be much that was wrong. We all said that the first thing we'd do, save the 52 minutes that he didn't respond, right. would respond right. in light of what we knew now, but at that time we didn't. And, uh, he just so determined to find something that was wrong that uh, uh, he wouldn't even listen to the the other things it looked like to me. Now, I thought maybe I was just... <laughs> Uh, prejudice, but no, when he started uh, pounding the table, he, he I thought in, he was just... He came in temperate. Uh, it was just a disgraceful performance. Now, I do think that when he left, uh, he'd cooled down some, and, and uh, I think uh, the unanimous front that he faced, and <clears throat> particularly Buzz Wheeler's strong support of it, uh, cooled him off, and I doubt very much he's going to be making <laughs> make many speeches about this subject. They're going to find some anything they can find, though, that's wrong. What do you think our reaction ought to be? Should it be different from what it was last night? We're going into other meetings. Uh, I thought that uh, I was rather willing to admit the possibility of error all along. I well, kept saying that, uh, uh, sure, if you ask me now, today, I'd, I'd change a lot of yeah. things. I, I would respond immediately instead of waiting 52 minutes. I, I think that I'd take exactly that tack with other meetings, except that I wouldn't initiate it. I, and I don't think you're going to get that kind of partisan criticism uh, in some of these other meetings. I'd be surprised if Aaron's, for example, did that. He's not strong enough to do that. Uh, but uh, but if he does, I'd respond exactly the same way. Do you way. think we were too strong with Jerry or oh, too no. weak? Oh, no. No, no, no. I, I thought it was, uh, frankly, I thought it was just right, Mr. President. I thought when he left, uh, he'd cool down some, and he'd be found that there wasn't a chink in our armor that he'd been able to break through. I would have had Laird had just been more. Oh, that that's right. And that's why I didn't want him there, Mr. President. He, he's impossible to do. You can't argue with him. He's a bright guy, and he's brighter than Jerry, for one thing. How did you evaluate uh, Dirksen? I don't know. I I, I concluded that uh, he was just uh, keeping his powder dry and preserving his options. He was very anxious to uh, go in with all flags flying, all guns blazing, until I talked to him a long time the other day at the Security Council luncheon or something. He called me. I don't know whether you all noticed it, but I had a long talk with him and on the phone. And he, I, he wound up, he said, all right, what do you want me to do? And I said, I just want you to say that the president is reviewing this matter and will give the leaders a report and whatever the nation needs uh, will be supplied and will be supported. And he said, all right. So he said something along that line, didn't say much yesterday, he said a little more. But uh, what I thought maybe last night what he was doing, I, I was hoping that you'd have this reaction, but I guess it's not justified. I was hoping he was just utterly disgusted with Ford's performance and didn't want to go against him and at the same time didn't want to endorse well, him. Mr. President, I thought that for a time, but then he remained silent so long. Initially, I, when Ford was getting angry and his face was contorted with anger, I thought uh, Dirksen really was feeling contempt. But then it went on and on and on. He didn't say a damn word, and he could have very easily. Well, I know, but point. yes, but what uh, he would be charged with undercutting him, and I just thought he couldn't say anything in that display. It's like your wife well, tears yeah. up those over the. Maybe so, but I thought there were several openings when he could have said, "Well, Buzz, what do you think about this now? Surely there's something we could have done differently, or is it? But would it have made any difference? This is what he, this is the line Everett ever should have taken." Sure, there are certain things here we must have been able to do. 52 minutes, but suppose you had done it 52 minutes. Would the end be any different? And the answer, of course, is no. And I, there were several openings he had, and he didn't seize them, and that's why I felt he was preserving his options. And also, I, I haven't read the, the record. It's on my desk right now but uh, uh, of yesterday, but the, the newspaper reports weren't particularly good on what he said yesterday, it seemed to me. Uh, Dirks. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, one thing about McDonald, Bob, I thought if we got in deep trouble, he is a little better witness, I believe, than uh, most of them. Isn't he better than Mora? 
Yes, he is better. He looks sharper to me and more yeah, modern, clearer, right. and cleaner. And Actually, and more I right. think you got to scare hell out of McDonald and get him into this yeah. thing and his Navy and his skipper. Well, and no, his it's, his, it's his operation in a very real sense. Yeah, well, it's on long enough to. Well, that's what no, I mean. You're, oh, you're absolutely right. I, and I, I'd get him up to it up in his yeah, ears, and then I'd picture him as Mr. Yeah, objective yeah, and yeah. Mr. Right. Right. Uh, fair and Mr. Uh, so and so. Mr. President, I, I knew you were disappointed with the briefer yesterday, but I did it purposely. If you saw all his medals, and you must have, Christ, he has 14 campaign ribbons and medals there, and he has three stars on his shoulders, and quite frankly, I did it purposely to put him forward instead of me. Not that I'm trying to get out of the line of fire, but I just thought that in this situation, those people would be more impressed by a man with a suit on his. I think it's all right to try them, but uh, this morning we'll do it differently. The closer you get to leaving, the more I miss you, and I just, there's not anybody in this government that can say as much in as little time as you can. Well, Mr. President, I said, I, I quite frankly, I've tried to I think back just, and I make, thought he was just, uh, uh, I just didn't think he was yeah. up to it. This morning, I thought we'd have Buzz do what he did last night, and then I'll take the questions. That's good. Okay. That's very good. Hey, Mr. President, yeah. one thing, you might like Buzz first this morning to start with. South Vietnam, he'll, he'll very quickly cover in two or three minutes the events of the night. Good, good. Tell him, Bob, and you too, I mean, you don't ever have any trouble, but tell him to talk louder from that yes. end of the room. Yes, it's, uh, the echo. The, the echoes are yeah. awful in there. Yeah, that's right. I can't hear half what's going on. I'll Bye. tell him. Thanks.